will answer the question that many t taxpayers may have, who can I claim as a dependent on my tax return? So uh, to help you through this process, you can go through the Form 1040 instructions, uh, like almost zero people like to do, or you can go to the IRS website where the Interactive Tax Assistant has a tool, an online tool that will help you walk through this process. According to the website, it takes about 15 minutes, uh, and you really don't need much more information than your marital status, your relationship to the person that you think may or may not be a dependent, and then some background information on how much support is provided. Uh, you also need some basic uh, income information, which you could probably get from your tax return. And also understanding that uh, if you have a multiple support agreement, then you may need to uh, have that at the ready so you can uh, refer to the terms of that support agreement. So uh, a multiple support agreement is one in which, let's imagine there are three siblings and they all have taken an equal responsibility uh, for care of an aging parent. Uh, if you take equal responsibility amongst three people, that means each person provided a third of the dependent support. So a multiple support agreement is an arrangement that the IRS recognizes where uh, the uh, participants that provide support can uh, kind of maybe equally balance who can take that tax benefit when. So that's what a multiple support agreement does. And, and generally, you know, three people, you could almost expect that every third year, uh, you know, uh, a taxpayer may be able to take that credit or that, that dependency status uh, on behalf of a parent. It might be arranged that, uh, you know, two people uh, may, you know, make some contribution. Uh, they agree one person takes it one year, another person takes it the third year or the second year. And then uh, maybe at that point, they transfer the support arrangement to the third person. Uh, there's a lot of ways that you could do that. And it's usually uh, determined in a written document known as that support, multiple support agreement. So, uh, Make sure that you have that at the ready if, if available or if, if you need to. So uh, this tool is designed for U.S. citizens and resident aliens uh, who have had that status for the entire tax year. If you're married, your spouse also has to have been a citizen or a resident alien. Now, uh, for non-residents or dual status aliens, uh, we can check out the International Taxpayers page. There is a resource for that, uh, for international individuals, businesses, uh, things of that nature. Uh, that's a little beyond the scope of this video, so we'll go back to uh, this uh, walkthrough. So we'll walk through a couple of scenarios, see if we can uh, break the ITA uh, tool, so to speak, uh, and just kind of see where these options are. But uh, basically, these interactive tools uh, distill the various questions, uh, kind of like a choose your own adventure book for people that grew up in the 70s or the 80s, uh, where you could go back, revisit a, a different decision and see what the outcome looks like. So let's hit the begin button and we're going to go to the interactive uh, tax assistant page. And these are going to be a set of questions that will help you determine who you can claim as a dependent on your tax return. So, uh, which tax year are you talking about? Let's go ahead and select tax year 2023. On the last day of this uh, year, are you going to be married, widowed, uh, or single? So uh, the IRS recognizes for tax purposes, your marital status for a specific tax year is whatever your mar uh, marital status was on the last day of that year. So let's imagine uh, we're recording this in November. You're currently separated, but you're still married and your divorce doesn't get finalized until January. Then, you know, as of the end of 2023, your separation, uh, you might be legally separated, 
Uh, but if it's not a legal document, and if you're in a state where you just need to be trial separated for six months or whatever before your divorce is finalized, then you would still be considered married at the end of that tax year. So unless there's a written document that says you're legally separated, unless you get that divorce decree, you're technically married at the end of the tax year. Conversely, if you were single all the way up until November, I'm not sure I've ever met anyone that got married in November, but if if you're married all the way up until the end of the, or if you were single all the way up until the tax end of the tax year, if you got married on December 30th, you would still be considered married. So uh, that's so let's just say that we're married, um, and we'll move on. So your tax filing status is married filing jointly, married filing separately, or head of household. We're going to select married filing jointly. Now. Did you and your spouse provide more than half of your support for the tax year? Let's click on this and see what happens. Uh, it actually takes us to a part of the website where it says support includes these items. Food, lodging, clothing, education, medical and dental care, recreation, transportation, similar activities. That's what the IRS definition of support looks like. Oop. So let's go back to, did you provide your own support? Now, this basically means, could someone else claim you as a dependent? So let's just say, yes, we provided more than half of our own support. No one can claim us as a dependent. Did you or your spouse provide more than half of your spouse's support? Yes. So now you're going to add someone. You can add, let's just say... We're going to add someone uh, who lived with you or who is your child or for whom you provided any financial support, not to include your spouse. So let's just say, let's see. we'll use my son, Nicholas. So was Nicholas married at any time during the tax year? No, he was not. Was he a citizen for some part of the tax year? Yes, he was. Did he provide more than half of his own support? No, he did not. What is his relationship to me? Well, he's my biological child. I'm not going to put his exact birthday down, but we'll just make something uh, up in the ballpark. So let's just say that's close enough. So is he younger than me? Well, hopefully. Yeah. I don't know any situation where someone has a biological child that's older than they are, but so I'm not sure how this question slipped in here. But yes, uh, is Nicholas's other legal parents still alive? Yes. Was he a full-time student? Let's click this and determine what a full-time student was. A full-time student is someone that is enrolled full-time for any five calendar months out of the year. It could be a regular uh, course of study, training course, regularly em enrolled student, bo uh, student body member at a school. So uh, since Nicholas did graduate from high school, he was a full-time student during the tax year. And did he live with us more than half of the tax year? Uh, he's considered to live with you during periods of time when you might be uh, temporarily absent due to business, vacation, military service, it must be reasonable to assume that th that person will return home. So he did live with us for more than half of the tax year uh, this year. So uh, where was I legally separated from his other parent? No, I was not. Was I separated? No, I was not. Uh, can someone else claim him as a qualifying child? No, they cannot. Was he issued a valid social security number? Yes, he was. So all of this to say that you can claim this person in this circumstance as a dependent. Now, usually the ITA has maybe four or five different questions. You satisfy them and you can kind of walk through that decision tree to see whether or not, oh, I need to change this. I need to flip this over. Uh, 
This one has a little bit more complexity to it, as you can see. So there are one, two, three, four, I mean, there's somewhere between 15 and 20 different questions here. So when you take a look at this, be sure that you're looking at all of the information with a critical eye and that you're really, um, you know, that, that, that the questions that you answered uh, reflect the answers you think you are. For example, uh, some people might get tripped up over, did you and your spouse provide more than half of your support? That sounds like a nonsense question, but what the IRS is really trying to determine is, did someone else provide more than half of your support? Because uh, you might not be able to claim that person as your dependent if someone else is able to claim you as a dependent, right? So make sure that you kind of spend some time looking through these questions uh, critically. Uh, you can also uh, check all these hyperlinks, right? So which tax year? Uh, the tax year is defined as your calendar year, generally for individuals. Um, what's your filing status? Your filing status kind of determines, you know, your tax situation, how much your deductions can be, eligibility for credits. Uh, can someone else claim Nicholas as a qualifying child? So there is a test. There are five tests for qualifying children. Relationship, age, residency, support, and then uh, a special test that applies to someone that would be a qualifying child for multiple people. So uh, let's pretend that we need to go back and change one of these questions. So um, let's say that Nicholas was, um, I'll say that Nicholas is a, is a parent, which means that his birthday has to be a little bit older than 2004. Um, is he younger than me in this case? No. Uh, is his other legal parent alive? No. Was he a full-time student? No. Uh, was he totally and permanently disabled? Well, let's click on this. Uh, so if they can't engage in substantial gainful activity because of a physical or mental condition and a doctor determines that the condition has lasted or can expect to be last uh, to last continuously for at least a year or could be a terminal uh, medical condition that will that's expected to lead to death. So um, let's just say he was. And did he live with us for more than half of the year? Yes. Uh, were we separated? No. Were we separated? No. Can someone else claim him? No. Yes. Uh, was Nicholas's gross income forty seven hundred dollars or more? In this case, we'll say no. Did we provide more than half of his support? Okay, well, in this case, you would be able to claim support for a parent where you provided more than half of their support and their gross income was not more than $4,700. What would happen if I changed that to a yes? Um, did, the work, did the person work at a sheltered workshop in the tax year? Let's say no. Did I provide more than half of his support? Yes. So you can not claim Nicholas as a dependent because in this case, he had gross income that was equal to or more than the allowed amount for a dependent. And that would mean that he does not pass the gross income test for dependency. So uh, you can walk through this and through all of these different scenarios uh, and then I would encourage you to hit the home page whenever you're done. You can print this out, by the way, uh, for your own records. So before you uh, go off page, print this out for your records. Um, but uh, you can then go back to the interactive tax assistant page where you can look at who you can file claim as a dependent on your tax return. So simply go to irs.gov forward slash help forward slash ITA you'll find this page right here. So that's all we have for this video. Uh, if you like our YouTube videos, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, I'll put links to uh, not only 
uh, this, but a couple of other relevant articles that we've created specifically on multiple support agreements if that's something that you need to take a look at. So um, if you like our articles, uh, please subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, you can go to our website, teachmepersonalfinance.com. You can type in any numbered IRS form. Odds are very high that we've written an article about it or it's on our to-do list. So if there's a tax form that we haven't written about that you'd like me to write about, please let me know. Otherwise, look on our website, teachmepersonalfinance.com. You'll find a lot of great information about different uh, tax forms and schedules. You can go to our, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel where we put out daily guidance in the form of helpful videos on a wide variety of tax subjects. So uh, if there's anything I can do for you, please reach out. And uh, thank you very much and have a great day.